everyone welcome to nail the neat revision series so today it's going to be the ninth day i'm going to teach biology today so today i'll be talking about respiration in plants which is really important topic that i'm going to deal with it so all of you get ready before that i want all of you to let me know whether you can see me and hear me if you can see me and hear me please reply me with the s in the chat box Yes, okay. I'm just going to wait for some more time and then we'll start the session. Okay, before beginning the session, for your information, so you'll be having a five-year NEAT exam paper analysis, which will be given in the description below after the class gets over. So you can just download and it will be very beneficial for you. Apart from that, if you want to know about NEAT at Biotechnica, you can just uh, call a toll-free number or you can join a Telegram channel where you get freebies, uh, mind maps, everything for you. And you can also mail to info at biotechnica.org. Yes. Okay. Okay, we'll start the session. All of you take your pens, everything ready. So let's start this session, which is on respiration in plants. So I'm going to deal with all NCRT lines. So make sure you mark all the NCRT points, which is really important for your examinations, right? Okay. Okay. What is respiration? So we have studied during this Nail the Neat Revision series about photosynthesis. So after continuing this one, so there's a correlation with photosynthesis and respirations. So in photosynthesis, as we already know, we study there is actually synthesis of glucose. So in this, what we are going to do, we are just going to write the opposite of the reaction that you have studied in photosynthesis. So let's write the reaction of photosynthesis. We know carbon dioxide reacts with water. So plants are going to take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and they're going to take water from the soil with the help of sunlight and chlorophyll. And they're going to produce glucose molecule. Only one molecule of glucose we are going to write. C6H12O6 and it's going to produce oxygen molecule and little bit of energy. So listen, so we know that there are going to be six Calvin cycles. So glucose is going to have six carbon. So which means they need to have six carbon dioxide has to be fixed in order to make one glucose. So what we are going to study in this photosynthesis is six carbon dioxide as fixed as one glucose molecule. But in respiration, what we are going to do, the plant has produced glucose and the plant has already produced oxygen as a byproduct. So what the plant is going to do is the plant is going to utilize this food along with the oxygen that it is produced and it's going to produce energy for themselves for all the metabolic process. So we are going to deal respiration in detail for now. So how to write this equation? If you write this opposite reactions in this way, it's going to be this. So C6 H12O6 plus one molecule and it's going to give six molecules of oxygen which is going to give same process six CO2 plus six molecules of water and with little bit of energy that we are going to talk about ATP molecules. So it's just the opposite of this reaction. Very important thing we're going to deal whether it's catabolic or anabolic. So please make sure to watch and learn every line in it. Okay. All the energy required for life processes is obtained by oxidation. Very important. When you are talking in case of uh, photosynthesis, you might have studied photosynthesis is a reduction reaction. But here, respiration is going to be oxidation reaction. We know what is oxidation. Oxidation means loss of electrons. We already know. Or we can say addition of oxygen or removal of hydrogen. So we know this. Removal of hydrogen. So please make sure to remember photosynthesis is going to be reduction process, whereas respiration is going to be oxidation process. Oxidation of some macromolecule, which we call food. So plants usually manufacture food, which is going to be glucose. 
and they used to store in the form of starch. This starch we are going to consume. So what the plant also actually stores starch in parenchyma cells. Listen carefully. We know that only green plants and cyanobacteria like Anabana species, they can prepare their fruits, which means they are talking about autotrophs. Auto means which self. So they can produce food by themselves. Okay. And then they trap light energy and they convert into chemical energy. We already know. And then all the energy are stored in the form of bonds. This is very important. Suppose if I'm talking about glucose, glucose is going to have six carbon. So it is actually having bonds connected, right? Let me write six carbon. So these bonds are actually going to have energy. So whenever you break a bond, you actually get energy, right? Yes. So we are going to deal this reaction. All the reactions are going to be hydrolytic enzymes and reaction, which means we are going to add water in one of the reaction at least, and we are going to break the bonds. Whenever you're going to break a bond, you are going to get energy. So we are going to break glucose molecule, which is going to be six carbon. The plant also does the same, and even human beings does the same. Okay, let's talk. In case of animals, animals, we know we are going to be heterotrophs. So they obtain food from plants directly. Herbivores, we know. And carnivores, we used to rely on animals which feeds on plants. And what about saprophytes? You can see saprophytes, fungi. They used to rely on dead and decaying matters, which is ultimately going to be the litters, which are going to be plants. So what is very important to recognize, these are NCRT lines. All the food that is respired for life processes usually come from photosynthesis. Without a plant, nobody can have a food. So everything comes through the process of photosynthesis. Okay. So now we'll talk about these lines. I'm going to talk about this very important line. You'll be getting the same line in your examination. Refer. Respiration is conversion of a chemical bond energy into energy of usable forms. You cannot use the bond energy as such. It has to be converted into ATP molecules. So that is very important. So suppose if I have to talk about glucose, C6H2O6. So what we're going to do in this reaction is, so this glucose has six carbons. So I'm going to break the bonds like this. So whenever you're going to break the bonds, you're going to get energy. So I'm going to break it into Three, mole, uh, three molecule, or we can say three carbon compound and a three carbon compound. So I'm going to have a six carbon compound. Now I have broken a six carbon compound into a three carbon and a three carbon. Where What I'm going to get, I'm going to get a little bit of ATP. So whenever you're going to break a bond, you are definitely going to get what energy. So the plants also does the same. So you can see the phenomenon of breaking carbon carbon bonds. When we are talking about glucose, we are talking about the carbon carbon bonds that you are seeing in case of glucose. And complex organic molecule, we know that organic molecule is nothing but glucose. It's not necessary. It has to be glucose always. It can be proteins, it can be lipids or it can be anything else. Yes. Good evening, Mahesh. Yes. Okay. The next one. The compounds that are oxidized are also known as substrate. Okay. I told you glucose is going to be oxidized. Very important. Please make sure photosynthesis is a reduction reaction, whereas respi respiration is going to be oxidation reaction. What does it mean? Here you can see this is going to be three carbon compound. This is going to be three carbon compound. We are going to add oxygen or there's going to be loss of electrons. That's what we're going to see. So any substances which you're going to break a bond or it's going to undergo oxidation, that molecule is called as respiratory substrate. That is very important. So what are those respiratory substrate? It can be a polysaccharide, which means starch, or it can be any form of sugars, or it can be protein molecules, or it can be a fats, or it can be any of the nucleic acids like DNA or RNA, or it can be pigments at times. And it also can be cytochrome. So you have to remember this is a very important thing. Make it a star point. You might be getting this in your examination. The next important one. Usually carbohydrates are oxidized. I told you glucose is going to be a carbohydrate. It is the one which is getting oxidized. It is the one which is getting oxidized. But it's not necessary. I told you glucose has to be a respiratory substrate. It can be proteins, fat, even organic acids can also be there. We'll be studying this in amphibolic pathways. And it's used as a respiratory substance under certain conditions. Okay, yes. 
So this is another important line. This you will get in your examination. So what is this going to be? So here we said this glucose cannot be broken down easily into a three carbon compound and a three carbon compound. It needs to undergo a small step reaction. So there is going to be a lot of steps which are going to be involved in order to break a six carbon molecule into a three carbon and three carbon molecules. Okay. Now the question for us. Do plants breathe? Yes, plants do breathe. But do they have any specialized respiratory organs like we have? Like we have lungs. So lung is the one which performs all the functions in your body. But plants do not have any specialized organ. What's the reason for it? Yes. So we can say they exchange gaseous exchange usually takes place with the help of stomata, which is present in the lower epidermis in case of dicots. And they have lenty cells. So this is important one. Make it a star point, all of you. And what are the reasons why they do not have any respiratory organ? The first reason, in our body, the entire body is actually controlled by the lungs for its respiration. But in case of plants, every part of the body takes its own care. So every, if you're talking about root or stem or leaves or whatever it is, every plant can do its gaseous exchange by themselves. So there's not much amount of this respiratory organs which is actually required. What's the second thing? They don't need that much amount of gaseous exchange like we have. We are huge organisms, but they are very small ones. So they don't need a great demand for this respiratory organs. We can say this is another important reason. What's the third reason? The distance that gaseous must diffuse in large bulky plants is not great. If you're talking about humans who are large, they need more amount of gaseous exchange, which will be taking place. We will be studying in breathing and exchange of gases. That much distance is not required when you talk in case of plants. So these are the points why the plant do not have any respiratory things. Okay, now we are moving on to respiration in detail. I want all of you to write this in your NCRT book. Yes, so let's do it. So first thing we have to talk about something called as metabolism. Yes, let's write metabolism. So what is metabolism? So we are going to talk about all the metabolisms in detail. So metabolisms are of two types. So one is called as anabolism. And one is called as catabolism. So one is called as catabolism. So I told you here I'm going to break a six carbon compound which is going to be glucose into three carbon and three carbon which means I'm breaking a large molecule into a small molecule. So whenever you break a large molecule is broken down into a small molecule that process is called as catabolism. So can I say that a photosynthesis is going to be a catabolic process? So we have to remember respiration. One thing I told you, it is oxidation process. Oxidation process. What exactly happened in glucose? In glucose, you're going to have C6H12O6, which means hydrogen is present over here. But when this is broken down, finally what we will be doing is we will be getting a lot of carbon dioxide. Here in carbon dioxide, you don't have any hydrogen molecule. What you have done, you have removed the hydrogen molecule. So this process is definitely removal of hydrogen is going to be oxidation. So one thing you have to remember, respiration is an oxidation process. And the second one, it's a catabolic process. So we can say C6H12O6 is broken down to two molecules of pyruvic acid, which is a three carbon molecule. And finally, it's going to give you carbon dioxide, which is six molecules. Okay, what about anabolism? Anabolism is just the opposite of it. Many small molecules combines together and if they make up a large molecule, suppose you can take uh, many glucose molecules combines together and they make up starch or glycogen in liver and muscles. That is anabolism. So large molecules, small molecules, combines together, they combine together, making a large molecule. That is going to be anabolism. So you can just remember anabolism is going to be example, photosynthesis. Just correlate photosynthesis and respiration together. It's going to be very easy. I just want somebody to answer me. Is it clear for you? If not, please reply me with a no or if yes, please reply me with yes. Good evening, Roshni. How are you? Good. Okay. So we are done with this one. I told you this point is really important. Respiration is catabolic. 
yes it's catabolic we are breaking a glucose to provide energy and oxidation process i told you important line examination question exothermic what is exothermic exo is something which liberates so here there is a liberation of energy yes respiration ultimately says whenever you hear of a word respiration carbon dioxide is released so glucose is going to produce carbon dioxide ultimately and there is release of atp we are talking about cellular respiration how every cell is performing respiration how is every cell is going to produce atp we are talking about so liberation of energy so please correlate photosynthesis is going to be anabolic endothermic and reductive process but respiration is catabolic exothermic and oxidative process okay so i want all of you to solve this question so you can see what best represent the chemical formula for respiration i want an answer from you some of you can you just attempt and tell me what's going to be the answer anybody is it option a b or c or d yes loganathan um, loganathan okay so it's going to be what yes we already told you glucose aerobic respiration so oxygen is involved liberating water molecule and carbon dioxide so the answer is option c very good very good okay the next one catabolic process i told you what's a catabolic process can you anybody answer this question so makes complex molecules from a simpler molecules or breaking a complex molecule into a simpler molecule or it takes place only in plants and it takes place only in heterotrophs or none of the above yes what's the answer what's the answer for this question very good jayashree very good mathi very good mohammed rizwan roshni yes the answer is going to be option b very simple you'll get very easy questions like this please make sure to understand okay so i'm going to talk about two type of respiration one is going to be aerobic respiration another one is going to be an aerobic respiration the word itself gives you an idea aero means there is going to be oxygen present so an aerobic means oxygen is absent so i'm going to talk about this in detail so we know about this one this is going to be aerobic respiration we have done with this formula c 6 6 and atp we'll be studying 36 to 38 molecules of atp are actually produced i'll tell you when to answer 36 and when to answer 38 okay and anaerobic which does not use oxygen okay where does it takes place anybody can you tell me uh, anaerobic respiration where it will take place where it will take place in case of animals and in case of other things in animals where it will take place anybody can you just guess and answer me where it will take place and aerobic condition there's no oxygen at all when you're doing any exercise right so you are deficit of any oxygen that time what exactly happen you used to have muscle fatigue so what exactly will happen there is no oxygen so it usually takes place in muscles so you should remember in animals it's going to be in muscles and it also takes place in case of yeast microbes in human welfare chapter we will be studying about e saccharomyces cerevisiae we used to produce alcohol so that is also taking place in the absence of oxygen right if if an alcohol has to be produced if you provide oxygen yeast will dry so yeast cannot have any zymase enzyme so oxygen shouldn't be present at all so remember yeast and muscles okay okay now we'll talk about the complete outline of aerobic and anaerobic please make sure to understand it clearly i'm going to deal with both aerobic and anaerobic together okay so first what is the fate so i already told you suppose let's consider the plant has produced some molecules of glucose so let me write they have produced glucose which is going to be c6 h12 o6 and i told you glucose is going to be a reducing sugar glucose is a reducing sugar which means they are going to be very reactive sugar very reactive if they are very reactive sugar glucose suppose let's take it is produced in the leaf but every part of the plant requires glucose it has to be transported everywhere but glucose cannot be transported as such because they are reducing sugar and they are very very reactive why they are reducing sugar because they have a functional group which is going to be aldehyde on the first carbon if they have an aldehyde group they have a capacity to reduce the felling's reagent copper 2 plus to copper plus so there's a chance that it can react with any molecules so what will happen is this glucose has to be converted into what anybody can you just tell me glucose has to be converted into what sucrose 
Sucrose is made up of glucose and fructose. And this is called non-reducing sugar. Why it is called a non-reducing sugar? Because they do not have any functional group. No ketone group. Fructose usually have ketone group, but here they do not have any ketone group. They do not have aldehyde group, so no functional groups are present, so they cannot be reactive molecule. So glucose, some amount of glucose, suppose let's take 100 molecules of glucose have been produced by the plant. 50 molecules will remain as glucose and 50 molecules will be changed into fructose because they are isomers. Glucose can be converted into fructose easily. So 50-50 combines together, they make a sucrose. But, so you should remember, it is synthesized as glucose and transported as sucrose but sucrose cannot go inside a cell because we are talking about cellular respiration every cell needs glucose but they cannot be going inside as such so they need to have one important enzyme this is an important neat question i want all of you to make it a star point in your book in what is so now this sucrose so in what is is an enzyme which is hydrolytic which means when you add water, right? when you add water, lytic means actually breaking down. Hydro means water. So when you add water, you break a bond. When you add water, you actually break a bond. So usually we will see in our body, most of the enzymes are going to be hydrolytic enzyme. Without water, nothing happens. That's why our body has maximum amount of water in our body. Not only in our case, in, in case of plants also. Now this will be again converted into glucose. Now, I told you, glucose is a six carbon compound. And I'm going to break again this molecule into three carbon compound and a three carbon compound. And what is this three carbon compound going to be? It is going to be pyruvic acid or you can call it pyruvate. So what will happen here? A little amount of ATP can be produced here, right? So what happens to this pyruvic acid? So remember, Six carbon compound is getting converted into three carbon compound and a three carbon compound. So we used to write this two molecules of pyruvic acid. What happened to this pyruvic acid? Suppose if the pyruvic, if, if it is produced in a cell which has oxygen, no problem. It will go inside the mitochondria. So suppose if I'm talking about aerobic, which means if oxygen is available in the cell, I'm talking about the cell because it's cellular respiration. If oxygen is present, this pyruvic acid enters into mitochondrial matrix. From the cytoplasm, it will enter into mitochondrial matrix. And there, each of the pyruvic acid, I'm telling pyruvic acid is two molecules. So each of the pyruvic acid will be converted into a two carbon compound, which is going to be acetylcholine. And then they will enter into Krebs cycle, ETC and oxygen. Suppose, this is the fate of pyruvate. This is the fate. What happens to the pyruvate? Suppose if oxygen is not available. Suppose if you're talking about yeast. Yeast also requires energy, right? Yes. But they, they will not survive if oxygen is present. So there is no oxygen. That time what exactly happened to the pyruvate? The pyruvate will be converted into acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde. So what exactly is happening? Pyruvic acid. It's an acid. And this is an aldehyde. So what process is actually taking place? Reduction. So the molecules are getting reduced here. And from acetaldehyde, it is going to be getting converted into an alcohol. We can call it ethanol. And that is how ethanol is actually produced. And this process will happen when there is no oxygen, which we call it alcoholic fermentation. Suppose if it's taking place in case of muscles, in case of muscles, then it will be converted into lactic acid. See, ethanol is going to be two carbon. Pyruvic acid is 3 carbon. Acetyl, acetaldehyde is also 3 carbon. What exactly happened? Carbon dioxide is released. But lactic acid is going to be 3 carbon only. So there is no liberation of any carbon dioxide molecule. Yes. So just answer me whether you guys have understood. Yes. All of you. Just reply me with the S. Okay. So first we'll talk about aerobic respiration, okay? Yes. So to make it a bit shorter, we can write like this respiration. And there's going to be aerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration. And then there's going to be anaerobic respiration. Please make sure to remember glycolysis is common for both the process. Breaking down 
glyco means glucose lysis means breaking so c6h12o6 is broken down into two molecules of pyruvic acid is a common process for both aerobic as well as anaerobic conditions whether there's oxygen or not glycolysis is going to be common for both the cases so this is going to be the fate of pyruvit so if pyruvate is going to receive any oxygen so i'm talking about this is glycolysis this will take place in cytoplasm so here also i'm writing pyruvic acid two molecules actually two molecules of pyruvic acid so this is also going to be taking place in cytoplasm this is taking place in cytoplasm and now what exactly happens suppose if this pyruvic acid is going to receive oxygen then what exactly happens two molecules of acetyl coa listen carefully we know that pyruvic acid is a three carbon but acetyl coa or acetaldehyde is going to be a two carbon so what exactly happened to one carbon there is a liberation of carbon combines with oxygen to form what carbon dioxide that's why this process is called pyruvic acid decarboxylation and this will take place in mitochondrial matrix mitochondrial matrix and what exactly happen in the next case so there are two molecules of acetyl coa so one molecule is going to go for one krebs cycle another molecule is going to go for another krebs cycle very simple i told you it's going to be two carbon compound when you are going to break this one carbon will combine with oxygen and go as carbon dioxide another carbon combines with another oxygen and goes as carbon dioxide so for this cycle one acetyl coa two carbon dioxide are liberated and for another cycle two carbon dioxide are liberated so question can come like one glucose how many krebs cycles are there so just remember one glucose is getting converted to two molecules of pyruvic acid and then into two molecules of acetic acetyl coa one acetyl coa enters one cycle another acetyl coa enters another cycle so totally in acetyl coa we can say or we can say in krebs cycle four carbon dioxide are released and there would be some amount of nadh we'll be studying what is this nadh and fadh and there would be liberation of atp very important atp is called as the energy currency which means if you have money in your hand you go you purchase something that is what it is but nadh is something like a check if i give some check to you you would not be able to buy anything you have to go to bank and cash it then only you can use it utilize it the same way nadh and fadh are like indirect source of energy it's not like atp it's an indirect source of energy which has to enter into etc and then into oxfos and then all the nadh and all the fadh will be converted into atp molecule this happens in case of aerobic respiration but in case of anaerobic what exactly happens i told you it can either get converted into lactic acid with no carbon dioxide or it can be converted into ethanol which is a two carbon compound with carbon dioxide being liberated just answer me all of you whether you guys can understand if any doubts you can put your questions in the chat box please reply me with a s if you can good evening mohammed sir somebody somebody just answer me okay so we are done with this one so let's check food break down into simpler units very simple so glucose is first broken down or we can say sucrose getting broken down into glucose normal process and then glycolysis where is this glycolysis is an important question all of you they may be asking you this question in your examination which is cytoplasm in a cell it will take place in a cytoplasm here this is going to be the cytoplasm so glycolysis will take place here so glucose is broken down into two molecules of pyruvate and atp is also produced nadh is also produced which is an indirect source of energy and then the third process is going to be if oxygen is available i told you pyruvic acid decarboxylation d is removal carboxylation means removal of carbon dioxide so what exactly happen it will take place in mitochondrial matrix this location is very important for your examination matrix of mitochondria or we can say mitochondrial matrix okay krebs cycle i told you there are two acetyl coa so two krebs cycle is going to take place this is also in matrix of mitochondria important question etc tomorrow we are going to deal with etc and oxfos just remember it is going to take place in inner membrane of mitochondria very important 
in a membrane of mitochondria why they have to take place in this specialized location because the enzymes which are required for all these processes are present in these location that's why it's present over there oxfos is otherwise called as oxidative phosphorylation which means they are going to take place in f0 f1 particle which are present in the inner membrane of mitochondria only but very specifically it is in the f0 f1 particle so we already talked about respiration aerobic and anaerobic just remember aerobic first aerobic means glycolysis is going to be common for both the cases whether oxygen is available or oxygen is not available okay usually glycolysis will take place in anaerobic conditions and one glucose is going to produce two molecules of pyruvate and after that if oxygen is available they can enter into mitochondria and that's the reason we call mitochondria as the power house of the cell because if you have seen pyruvic acid decarboxylation or krebs cycle or etc or oxfos everything is in the mitochondria but the locations are kind of different that's why we call mitochondria as the power house of the cell okay okay so now we'll talk about the first step this is common pathway so they can ask you a question which is going to be the common pathway for both aerobic and anaerobic conditions please make sure to answer this question this is for aerobic there can be a question which is going to be the common pathway for all in aerobic respiration mean you should remember krebs cycle but here it is for both aerobic and anaerobic and we know glycose means sugars and lysis means breaking or splitting and sometimes in examination they won't give you glycolysis directly they can give you emp pathway which is mainly based on the scientists which is going to be emden meyerhoff parnas pathway so it is called as emp pathway yes okay so i already told you glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm of a cell because i'm talking about cellular respiration please make sure to understand where exactly it is actually happening and partial oxidation not complete oxidation to form two molecules of pyruvic acid this is important sometimes in question paper they can ask you complete oxidation partial oxidation glycolysis if it's aerobic respiration it is complete oxidation but when they talk about only glycolysis only half part of the glucose is broken down into three carbon so this is partial but if a question comes aerobic respiration make sure to answer it like complete oxidation right okay now let's talk about complete glycolysis pathway please make sure to write it properly because in ncert book we don't have clear explanation about it so let's write glyco lysis okay so i'm just going to consider this one as a complete cell this is going to be the complete cell i'm going to think because it is going to enter into this cell and this cell needs energy so what exactly is going to happen let's check okay so now the glucose is actually present outside glucose is actually present outside so i'm just going to make it like a six carbon compound okay it's a six carbon compound we know that glucose is a polar molecule if it's a polar molecule it's water soluble and we know the cell membrane whether it's made up of if you're talking about in case of plants even the cell wall anything we can say it is actually made up of phospholipids so glucose molecule which is a polar molecule cannot enter very easily so they need some channel proteins and this channel protein is called as glut transporter in animals it may be varying like glut or glut 2 but in case of plants we can directly refer it glut transporter so only through this channel this glucose can actually enter okay now what exactly is going to happen glucose is going to enter here okay there is a problem now when a glucose enter a cell they, they are bidirectional this gate is like when the door is open they can come in they can go out so what exactly happen as soon as the glucose come in they tend to go out of the cell but if glucose go out of the cell you cannot produce any atp or the plant cannot produce any atp so we have to retain this glucose inside the cell that's where the role of another enzyme comes so let's make it this is going to be the glucose molecule so let me write it as glucose which is a six carbon compound okay now what exactly happened now i have to convert this into some other molecule because this transporter is very specific only for glucose no other molecule can go so if i change a glucose into some other molecule they will not go over there so that's where the reaction comes so which is going to be with the help of an enzyme called hexokinase so hexokinase is very important so what is this enzyme is going to do this enzyme is going to combine with glucose glucose is a substrate hexokinase is an enzyme so both of them are going to react with together and they're going to produce another molecule 
3, 4, 5 and 6. This is the sixth position of the carbon. This is the first position. On the sixth position, we are going to add a phosphate molecule. But where is this phosphate com coming from? Somebody has to provide a phosphate to this one. Now this molecule cannot go over there. So who is going to provide ATP? So ATP is readily available in the cytoplasm. So ATP, ATP means triphosphate. Three phosphates are present. So one of the phosphate get attached to the sixth position. Remaining is going to be two phosphates. So ATP is utilized. That is very important. So in the first step, we are actually preparing. So that's why this first five step is going to be preparatory pathway. And the next five steps are going to be payoff, which means we are getting the ATP back again. Okay. Okay. Now this is going to be glucose 6 phosphate. Okay. This is very important. This is going to be an irreversible arrow. It shouldn't be both the way because we don't want the molecule to go out. So glucose has to be converted into glucose 6 phosphate. Now, what exactly happened? Glucose, we already know it has aldehyde group. But what we are going to do, we are going to isomerize it. Isomers. Isomers means same molecular formula, but the structures are going to be different. Glucose is made up of aldehyde group. But fructose is going to have ketone group in the second carbon. Now, what exactly happened? We are going to convert into a fructose molecule. Same phosphate is present. But for the second position, I'm just writing a ketone group. This is fructose 6-phosphate. And I told you it's an isomer. So, very easy. Just remember, it's isomerase enzyme. To be very specific, we can say phosphoglucoisomerase or phosphohexose isomerase. Okay. This is going to be reversible arrow. It can be both the direction. Now, what exactly happened to this carbon? This is also 6 carbon. This is also 6 carbon. Still now we have not broken a molecule. That's why you're not getting any energy. You're actually utilizing energy here. Okay. Now, what exactly happened in the next step? Very important. This is very important. I'll make it as a black color. Okay. This is irreversible arrow. Okay. Only one direction. This is also very important. So, this is going to get converted into fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate very important. This is also going to be a 6 carbon but understand it. I'm going to draw it. You can understand 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Already in the 6th position we have the phosphate attached but 1 position we need a phosphate and how this, this phosphate will come? Yes. Again there is a utilization of ATP. So from ATP 1 phosphate is going to be utilized and ADP will come out. Okay, yes. So, why are we calling it not biphosphate? Why are we calling it bisphosphate? We can also call it 1, 6 biphosphate. Always remember when a phosphate is present close by, suppose if it is present the fifth and the sixth, then we can call it bi, but they are present far away from each other. So, they are going to be fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate. So, you can see this is the first step, second step, third step and after this what's going to happen now we are going to break the bond so remember when you're not breaking a bond you will not get energy now we are going to break a bond i'm going to take you to the next slide or else i'll write it here so okay so fructose 1 comma 6 bisphosphate now what exactly happened now this is a six carbon compound we already know so let's make it like one two three four five and six here also phosphate is present here also phosphate is present now i'm going to break a bond now you'll get energy Yes, the plant is going to get energy. Okay, it, it is taking place in plant. So, we'll just make it like it is taking. Okay, the enzyme is going to be aldolysis. So, what I told you, when you break a bond, you are going to get energy or the plant is going to get energy. Now, we are going to break into a 3-carbon and a 3-carbon. What is that? So, one is going to be dihydroxyacetone phosphate. I'm writing it in a short way. Dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Acetone means ketone group. That's all. And this is going to be glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. You can also write it GA3B, which means this is going to have ketone group. Ultimately, they, this is also 3-carbon. This is also 3-carbon. And this is aldehyde group. This is going to be ketone group. And they are isomers, triose phosphate isomers. So, I'm just writing isomerase enzyme. Okay, now what exactly happened? Very important. Now we have divided or we have broken the bonds which are present in the glucose into 3-carbon and a 3-carbon. Now we will be getting all the energy. The plants are going to get little bit of energy. We are not going to completely break the bonds. Partial oxidation is going to take place in case of glycolysis. Okay, now what happened to this glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate? So, everybody, are you guys understanding? Everybody? Just answer me with yes. If not, just reply me with a no. All of you, yes? 
Just answer me with a yes if you can. Okay, fine. So let's move on to the yes, Mathi. Okay, now I'm going to write the same equation. Just understand carefully. I'm going to write dihydroxy acetone phosphate and I'm going to write glyceraldehyde. Just check your NCRT book along with it. Please refer that also. If you miss any enzyme, you can write it over there. Enzymes are not given. Okay, this is a three carbon compound. Just a minute. Okay, this is a three carbon compound. This is a three carbon compound. And now what exactly happened? Dihydroxyphosphate, which is a three carbon, I'm just going to keep it as such. And I'm going to use only glyceraldehyde three phosphate. So what is going to happen? This glyceraldehyde three phosphate, again, you can make reversible arrow. I told you there are two irreversible arrows I've drawn. The first step, glucose to glucose six phosphate, I have made it. Glucose six phosphate to fructose six phosphate, we have done. One comma six, we have done. Now I'm making all the rest of the things are going to be reversible arrows. Now what's going to happen? If you remember this, then you can easily understand dark reaction in Calvin cycle. Yes. The next one is going to be, just listen carefully. It's a three carbon compound. I'm just going to write like this and I'm going to write on the third position, phosphate is present because it's glyceraldehyde three phosphate. Okay. On the third position, it is present and it's going to have aldehyde group. And here dihydroxy is going to have a ketone group and on the third position, phosphate is present. Now what's going to happen? Now, I'm going to write the name. Just understand. 1, 3, bisphosphoglycerate. Or you can write it glyceric acid. Glycerate. So, what we have done is, this is an aldehyde group. When an aldehyde is going to be converted into an acid, this process is called as what? Again, oxidation. So, the molecule is going to be oxidized. Remember carefully, the molecule is getting oxidized. Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is getting oxidized to 1,3-bisphosphate. Let me write it 1, 2, 3. The phosphate is still present. But what happened to the first position? We need a phosphate. Now, what exactly happened? It's not going to be ATP. Please make sure that you're not writing utilization of ATP here. It's going to be inorganic phosphate. Some of the inorganic phosphate which are available in the cytoplasm will be utilized. And this will come to the first position. So first, second. Now we call it 1, 3 bisphosphoglycerate. And I told you the molecule is getting oxidized. But what exactly happened is there is going to be reducing power generated. NAD plus is going to be converted into NADH. So we have got some indirect source of energy, which is a check. We didn't get any ATP till now. But we have got for one glyceraldehyde, which is a three carbon, I have got one NADH molecules. Okay. Now next what happens? Okay, 1, 3 bisphosphoglycerate. The enzyme is here, I can write NADH dehydrogenase. NADH dehydrogenase. It is going to be so 1 ATP I have synthesized for 1 glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Next one is going to be 3 PGA. 3 PGA, which means first position, second position, third position. On the third position, phosphate is present. What happened to the phosphate which is present in the first position? Yes, now we are going to synthesize ATP or the plant are going to synthesize ATP. Whatever ADP is available in the cytoplasm, this phosphate will go and bind with this. And now we are synthesized one ATP molecule. So for the first time in your question paper, they may ask you where is the ATP produced? So you have to remember 1, 3 bisphosphoglycerate, we are getting payoff pathway. The next one is when it gets converted into 3 PGA. Now, since we are synthesizing ATP, we can uh, remember it like phosphokinase. Kinase is usually in the ATP production. So, phosphokinase. Next. Next is also going to be a reversible arrow. You should remember. It's going to be 2 PGA. Very easy. Third position phosphate is present. But here we are going to write it in the first, second position. That's all. What happens? Mutation. So, remember phosphomutase. Mutase is present. That's all. Next, 2 PGA is going to be converted into another. This is also a reversible arrow, PEB, or we can say phosphoenol pyruvate. This you will be studying in your uh, photosynthesis chapter also, PEP. Very important in C4 cycle, right? So, PEP. What does this enol mean? Enol, we already know. They are going to have OH group. And they're going to have a double bond, right? This is going to be enol. So what exactly happened is in this H position, phosphate is going to come and attach here. So this is going to be phosphate is present. Here, what exactly happened? Phosphoenol pyruvate. In this position, phosphate will come and attach over here. That's all. Now, what exactly happened? This is very important. So this is going to be 
irreversible arrow. So three step I'm making an irreversible arrow. If you can see the first step is the step when a glucose is getting converted into glucose six phosphate. This is a irreversible arrow. And then fructose six phosphate to fructose one comma six phosphate is an irreversible arrow. And the last step is going to be an irreversible arrow. And remember, this is with the help of an enzyme. Question can come. This is an important question. When a P two PGA is getting converted into PEP, there's an involvement of an enzyme called enolase when water molecule is going to be liberated. So question can come, how many water molecules are liberated in one glycolysis, in glycolysis? So I'm talking about only for glyceraldehyde. Still we have DHAP. This has to be again get converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and the same step will take place. And finally, we are going to have pyruvic acid. Now, this is phosphoenol pyruvate. What happened to the phosphate? Yes, again ATP production. And this is called pyruvic kinases. So what we have done, for one glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, it gets converted into one pyruvate. But DHAP is still present, dihydroxyacetone phosphate is still present. This again gets converted into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So I can make it 2 over here. In your book, everywhere it is given 2. Do not forget that calculation. So 2 molecules of 1, 3, 2 molecules of 3 PGA, 2 molecules of 2 PGA, 2 molecules of PEP and 2 molecules of pyruvic acid and all the things become 2 NADH and there is going to be 1 ATP here, 1 ATP here. So it will become 2 ATP, 2 ATP. So it's going to be totally how many ATPs are formed? 4 ATPs are formed in this pathway with 2 NADH. Let me write it here. Let me write it here. 4 ATP and 2 NADH and 2 molecules of water is actually coming out. But this is a wrong calculation. 4 ATP is a wrong calculation because in the first two pathways, right, first two steps, we have utilized 2 ATPs. So what we have to do, the total is 4 ATP minus of 2 ATP. So suppose if I have to talk about that calculation, we know there are going to be 2 NADH. Suppose if I have to talk, just a minute, let me just write it. I'm talking for one glucose. So one glucose is going to produce, only one glucose is going to produce two molecules of pyruvic acid. We already know because this is a three carbon. So three into six makes around six carbon. And now apart from that, there's going to be four ATP produced, but two ATPs utilized. Two ATPs utilized in the first and the third step. So totally it's going to be only two ATP. So if a question is asked, how many ATPs are produced in glycolysis? Please don't answer 4 ATP. It's going to be 2 ATP. What about in case of NADH? It's going to be 2 NADH. For 1 glyceraldehyde, 1 NADH. And dihydroxyacetone phosphate into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, another NADH. So 2 NADH are formed. And how many molecules of water comes out? 2 molecules of water. Where it is coming from? It is from the conversion of uh, 2 PGA to where enolase is actually involved. This is another important question. Okay, ma'am, I'm not able to understand or remember these complete thing. I'm going to give you a mnemonic. You can just write it. Let's write all the mnemonics here. Okay, I'm going to give you a mnemonic. You can easily understand. Okay, great G, which is glucose. And then great grandmother, great grandmother found. Okay, you can write. So, glucose, great, grandmother glucose 6-phosphate, found fructose 6-phosphate, fruits. Remember, great grandmother found fruits, fructose 1,6-phosphate in glass. So, G, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, just remember like this, glass, designed. Remember, designed. Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, designed is dihydroxyacetone phosphate by remember 3 PGA these are like people okay 3 PGA and 2 PGA so 3 PGA and 2 PGA designed by you can remember by is going to be bisphosphoglycerin 3 PGA and 2 PGA and praises proudly and praises proudly so great grandmother found fruits 
in glass designed by 3 pg and 2 pg and praises them proudly okay just remember glucose glucose 6 phosphate fructose 6 phosphate fructose 1 comma 6 phosphate and then glyceraldehyde 6 phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate 3 pg 2 pg and praises proudly pep and then pyruvate so all of you have understood just answer me with the s or no all of you yes all of you Okay, just answer this question. What's the end product of glycolysis? What's the end product of glycolysis? Anybody? What's the end product of glycolysis that you're going to see? Fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate or it's pyruvate or ATP or it's phos phosphoglyceraldehyde or lactic acid and ATP. Anybody? Yes. The answer is going to be pyruvate. Two molecules of pyruvate and two molecules of ATP. Okay. The next one, glycolysis. Important question. Glycolysis is a redox process or aerobic process or oxidative process or reductive process. Anybody? Yes, Roshni. Tell me the answer for this one. This one, glycolysis is redox process or aerobic or oxidative. Important question. Very good. It's going to be oxidative process very good very good Loganathan. next one the major reason why glycolysis is not as energy productive i told you glycolysis can produce only two atp it's not producing as many energy as the respiration is that why because we know pyruvate is more reduced than carbon dioxide still contains some of the energy even now pyruvate is going to have three carbon compound we have to again break them so it still has, so still it contains some more energy. So glycolysis alone is not going to give you more energy. When the complete process takes place, then only you're going to have 36 to 38 molecules of ATP. So answer is going to be option D. Okay. Next one. In which of the following reaction glycolysis, a molecule of important, this is neat question, all of you. Previous year question is removed from the substrate. Where is the water? Removed from the substrate. From where? Just check and let me know. Yes. Where is it? I told you this is an important one where enolase is involved. Yes. Very good. Very good, Logadhanandan. It is going to be option D. Okay. The end product of glycolysis is, what's the end product of glycolysis? We know it's going to be pyruvate. Okay. Which is not the end product of glycolysis? Which one is not the end product of glycolysis? Anybody? Which is not? Two carbon dioxide, two ATP, water molecules. Two NADH. Two ATP is produced. Yes, correct. And two water molecules are produced. Yes, correct. Two NADH is also produced. But we do not produce any carbon dioxide here. So this is going to be the correct answer. Carbon dioxide will be produced in the second step. Pyruvic acid decarboxylation and in Krebs cycle. Understood? Yes. Very good. Very good. Okay. Now we are moving on to fermentation. And then we'll move on to aerobic reactions. Okay. Yeah. I told you. Now. Glycolysis is a common pathway where glucose is getting converted into pyruvic acid, which is a two molecules of pyruvic acid, which is a three carbon. Now, what exactly happened to this pyruvic acid? What's the fate? Very important line. If we are talking in case of yeast, like Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So usually how they will make alcohols will be studying in microbes and human welfare. So this Saccharomyces cerevisiae is going to have zymase enzyme. Okay, this, this yeast is going to have zymase enzyme. What usually, how a ethanol will be produced? Actually, they used to make fruit juice, which is going to be fructose or glucose. So this is a substrate. This is going to be an enzyme. So enzyme and substrate will react together. And now what will happen? Suppose, let's take this is glucose. So glucose will be getting converted into what? It's a six carbon acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde. So glucose is going to give electrons. And acetaldehyde is going to accept electron. And this acetaldehyde again get converted into C2H5OH with this ethanol. And then since acetaldehyde is going to be a three carbon compound, pyruvate and three carbon compound, it's going to be two carbon. What happened to the rest of the carbon? It will go as carbon dioxide. That's the reason when you open the bottle of any ethanol, the fumes actually come, right? This is mainly because of carbon dioxide. It used to be present as ethanol. When it's open, when it gets exposed to water, one of the remaining carbon will combine with ox oxygen and it will be coming out as carbon dioxide. What is the enzyme that is required? Important question. Please make it a star point. Pyruvic acid decarboxylase 
and alcohol dehydrogenase. So what's the enzyme? And I'm going to tell you here, reoxidation is going to take place. What exactly happens here? Let us understand this one. So I told you glucose. And then there's going to be pyruvic acid, two molecules of pyruvic acid. I'm just going to consider two molecules. And now what will happen is in this reaction, in one step, two molecules of NADH is actually produced in glycolysis. So now there is no oxygen. This is going to be no oxygen, which is going to be, suppose, let's take, it is taking place in yeast. Now what exactly happened? They'll utilize this NADH and they're going to be reoxidized again into 2NAD+, which means this is going to be oxidation or reduction. It is oxidation. Oxidation means what? Addition of oxygen or removal of hydrogen. I have removed hydrogen from here. So you're not finding any hydrogen. So this is going to be what? Oxidation process. That's why in our book they have written reoxidation. But do not get confused. It's going to be dehydrogenase. So you have to write NADH. It's not that case. Okay. What is the enzyme here? Alcohol dehydrogenase or pyruvic acid decarboxylase. What about in case of lactate dehydrogenase, lactic acids? Let's see this one. This is an important NCRT question. They will ask you in your NEET examination. Please make sure I told you glucose getting converted into PEP and then into a pyruvic acid. This process is called alcohol fermentation or ethanol fermentation. Ethanol plus carbon dioxide, C2H5, OH plus carbon. What is the enzyme here? I told you it's going to be pyruvic acid decarboxylase. Important question. And alcohol dehydrogenase. Alcohol dehydrogenase. This is important question for your exam. Okay. And here it is reoxidized. Whenever you see dehydrogenase, please don't put NAD plus getting converted to NADH. Here it is reoxidized. Whatever the NADH produced in glycolysis is utilized again. What about in case of muscles? Suppose if it is taking place in muscles, in animals. So here it's going to be lactate dehydrogenase. This is another important neat question. Lactate dehydrogenase. Here also it's going to be reoxidation is going to take place over here. Yes? Okay. Okay. Let's move on to this question. What is fermentation? Anybody can you answer me? What is fermentation? What's fermentation? Easy question. Somebody, what's fermentation? Sugar is broken down into ethanol and carbon dioxide or sugar is broken down into yeast. No, yeast doesn't, it doesn't get broken down into yeast. And then it's broken down to ethanol and oxygen. No, we don't have oxygen here. This is also not correct. And ethanol and lime water. No, we don't have anything lime over here. So it's going to be option A. This is alcoholic fermentation. Okay, yes. This is another important question. Neat question, two, 2003 question. Just check it. Very good, Mati. Okay. Try this 10th question, all of you. Triose phosphate is an electron donor, which means what is this going to be? And pyruvic acid is an electron acceptor. Is it a correct statement? Understand it. Glucose is given. Glucose is a 6 carbon. It is getting converted into pyruvic acid, which is a triose phosphate. Triose phosphate. Or we can say anyway. And then it's going to be acetaldehyde. I told you acetaldehyde, which is going to be a two carbon. And acetaldehyde is going to be converted into what? We can say ethanol. Ethanol. Ethanol, two carbon plus carbon dioxide. Now, I told you pyruvic acid is going to donate electron. Donate electron. Whereas acetaldehyde is going to accept electron from pyruvic acid. Easy. So what's the answer going to be? The answer, pyruvic acid is going to be a donor. Whereas acetaldehyde is going to be an acceptor. So answer is option B. Okay, the next one. Okay, we are done with this one. Next, we are moving on to another important thing. So we have done glycolysis, which is a common pathway. And if there is no oxygen, they'll go for fermentation. Suppose, let's take glucose and two molecules of pyruvic acid. And this is taking place in cytoplasm. And now, if oxygen is available, this is aerobic respiration. We started talking about aerobic. Still now, we started with glycolysis, common for aerobic, anaerobic, and then fermentation, which is for anaerobic. Now, we are talking about aerobic respiration. Now, oxygen is available. 
Now what exactly happened? I'm going to write it for one pyruvic acid. You can just calculate for two pyruvic acid. So pyruvic acid, let's write it. Pyruvic acid is a three carbon compound. Let's write it here. Pyruvic acid is a three carbon compound. And this pyruvic acid is going to be converted into acetaldehyde and then into acetyl -CoA, coenzyme. So now I have to add an acetyl CoA to it. So plus CoA. So let me write it here. Yeah, let me write it here. Pyruvic acid 3 carbon combines with CoA and very important magnesium. Okay, yes, let's write acetyl CoA. Acetyl CoA, which is a 2 carbon. And now we need an enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase. And this is also going to be NAD plus is getting converted to NADH. And very important, without magnesium, this reaction will not take place. So this is another important question. What's the enzyme which is involved in it? So here, listen carefully, pyruvate is a 3 carbon. Acetyl CoA is a 2 carbon. What happened to the remaining carbon? That is going to be the liberation of carbon dioxide. That's why we are calling this process as pyruvic acid decarboxylation. So if you have to do it for two things, two pyruvate, two CoA, two NAD plus and two molecules of acetyl CoA, two molecules of carbon dioxide, two molecules. So in this process, how many NADH you're getting? If we have to make a calculation for that. Let's write for calculation for that. Okay. So we are talking about aerobic if oxygen is available in glycolysis which taking place in the cytoplasm we said 2 ATP 2 NADH and 2 molecules of water and 2 molecules of pyruvic acid is formed and the second step pyruvic acid decarboxylation what are the things that are produced let's check for one pyruvic acid i've done so in your examination make sure are they asking about one glucose or are they asking about one pyruvic acid okay so it's going to be two acetyl coa two acetyl coa and two nadh and two carbon dioxide so this process is called as decarboxylation so just calculate two atp directly the plant has got indirect source two nadh in first step the second step to NADH indirectly, second step it has formed. The next one is going to be TCA cycle. Yes. Now what exactly happens? Suppose let's consider this is cell in glycolysis takes place here in cytoplasm. Pyruvate is present, two molecules of pyruvate. And let's consider this is the mitochondria. And one pyruvate will, or we can say it gets converted into acetyl-CoA. And another one gets converted into acetyl-CoA. This is the mitochondria. This is one cycle. This is one cycle. So how many cycles are going to take place? Two Krebs cycles for one glucose molecule. So examination, make sure, are they talking about one cycle or are they talking about two cycles? If they talk about two cycles, that is going to be one glucose molecule. Okay, yes. Let's write the entire cycle. For your understanding, let's first write the mnemonics. Okay, after that, we'll write that and we will end the session. Okay, yes. So first, I'll write the mnemonics. Make sure you are knowing all the mnemonics at the last minute. So citrate. Just a moment. Citrate is Krebs first, or we can write like this. Let me write it here. Citrate is Krebs stable substance. For making oxaloacetic acid. Oxaloacetic acid. I'm writing oxaloacetic acid as OAA. So you can easily remember. Acetyl citrate, isocitrate, alpha ketoglutaric acid, succinyl coa, succinate, fumarate, malate, oxaloacetic acid. If you remember this mnemonics, all the product is going to be very simple. Now what we are going to do, oxygen is still now available and it's going to take place in mitochondrial matrix. So please remember glycolysis in the cytoplasm and pyruvic acid decarboxylation is taking place in mitochondrial matrix with the help of pyruvate dehydrogenase and two molecules of NADH are produced. Now we are going in for Krebs cycle and it is taking place in the matrix. This part is called as matrix. So remember, this is going to be the matrix. So let's write what are the pathway. Okay, yes. I told you, please remember like this. I'm going to write it for one cycle. 
and then we'll do it for the two cycle. So first I told you one acetyl CoA and we know acetyl CoA is going to be a two carbon compound. Okay, now what exactly happened? Acetyl CoA is two carbon compound. There is another molecule called oxaloacetic acid. This is a four carbon compound. A two carbon compound and a four carbon compound is going to undergo condensation process. Condensation means we have to have water molecules. So one water is actually utilized here. So four carbon and two carbon is going to produce what? A six carbon compound, which we call it citrate. Citrate is going to be a six carbon compound. Just remember the mnemonic I told you. So first I told you what? Citrate. So citrate is the first one done. And after this, this citrate is going to be converted into isocitrate. Isocitrate is again going to be what? A six carbon compound. And what is the enzyme? Very simple. Isocitrate dehydrogenase. Dehydrogenase. Okay. So I told you, except this fermentation, if you see in dehydrogenase, you can make it as reduction. NAD plus is getting reduced to NADH plus H plus. So I can write H plus over here. Okay. NADH, H plus or hydrides we can write. Okay. So one NADH is produced in this step, which is another indirect source of energy. We have made it. Okay. Isocitrate is six carbon. And then I'm going to write a five carbon compound. So citrate is Krebs stable substrates. So next is alpha keto glutarate. So listen, isocitrate is a six carbon. Alpha keto glutarate is a five carbon. Now what exactly happened? Six carbon is getting converted to five carbon. What happened to one carbon? Yes, one carbon dioxide is going to be liberated. So here one carbon dioxide goes out. That's why this process is called as what? Decarboxylation reaction. First step is condensation. There are going to be two carbon dioxide which is going to be released. I told you very simple. You can remember like this. This is a two carbon compound. Whenever you're going to break a two carbon compound, two carbons will come out and they combine with oxygen. So one citric acid cycle, it's going to be two carbon compound. Okay. Now five carbon compound is going to be converted. What's the enzyme? Alpha keto glutarate dehydrogenase here also there's going to be production of NADH so two steps we have seen NADH produced after five carbon what's going to happen four carbon which is going to be succinyl CoA succinyl CoA and this succinyl CoA is a four carbon which means where is this CoA coming CoA has to be added here and now this is going to be what exactly happened succinate synthetases Okay, and this is going to be again getting converted into what? Succinate. And then again, it's going to be converted into fumarate and then into malate and then into OAA. So just remember, citrate is alpha, citrate is, we can remember, Krebs stable substance for making oxaloacetate. So I'm going to take you to this image so that it will be very easy for you. Okay, this image. I told you first citrate. So citrate and then isocitrate. I'm not going to write all the enzyme, which is six carbon. And this is also six carbon. And then alpha ketoglutarate, which is a five carbon. And alpha ketoglutarate is getting converted into succinyl CoA. I'm going to tell important thing now. So which is four carbon. And this is going to be succinate. And then fumarate. And then malate, and then oxaloacetic acid, and these two will combine together, or we can say acetyl CoA, and this two will combine together, make up this one. Okay, very important. Where is the NADH produced? First important thing this, this step. This step one NADH is produced. Remember, one NADH is produced here, another NADH is produced here. Let me just write it here. NADH is produced in this step, second step. Another NADH is produced in this step. We can say this step NADH is produced. So how many NADH are produced? Three NADH are produced here. How many FADH is produced? Very important. When succinyl to fumarate, right? This step, one FADH is produced. Just remember before fumarate, F. So FADH. So succinate to fumarate, one FADH is produced and alpha ketoglutarate or isocitrate to alpha ketoglutarate and alpha ketoglutarate to succinyl CoA, two NADH is produced. Last step, one NADH is produced. 
another important thing this step is very important guys this step this step here direct this is called succinyl coa so here direct gtp and gdp and then adp and then atp is finally produced and this step is called as substrate level photophosphorylation because in this step if you see three molecules of nadh is produced one molecule of fadh is produced two carbon dioxide is released and if you see one direct atp is produced which means directly where is the atp produced is the question so you might be having succinyl coa to succinate is going to be substrate level photophosphorylation so let's calculate for one cycle we know which means one acetyl coa one acetyl coa so one acetyl coa how many atps are formed Three NADH is formed, and one FADH is formed. One direct ATP is formed. You have to remember what is that step? Direct ATP and two carbon dioxide. Very simple. If you are forgetting, just remember like this: two molecules. So when you break, two carbon dioxide is formed. Two it for two cycle, you will get six NADH, two FADH, and directly two ATP and four carbon dioxides. are actually formed here so you should just make a calculation for this one but i'm going to make this one very important for you many are getting confused with this one okay i was talking about from acetyl coa but in our book they talked about pyruvic acid we know in pyruvic acid also one carbon dioxide is released that's why it is given three carbon dioxide for one pyruvic acid okay if suppose it's going to be acetyl coa you have to write only two carbon dioxide so make sure you are remembering pyruvic acid is given in the question paper or acetyl coa is given in the question paper and answer is accordingly just answer this question and i'll end the session okay during aerobic respiration fadh2 is produced in glycolysis oxidation of pyruvate krebs cycle etc fermentation just answer this question and then we'll end the session this yes. fadh2 just now we have seen one pathway right anybody the answer is going to be krebs cycle two fadh2 is formed for one glucose so answer is going to be krebs cycle okay next one the final product of krebs cycle includes all except which one of these things is not present over there anybody NADP we have seen no NADP will come only in photosynthesis. Here we are talking only about NADH. NADH only we are talking. This NADP is mainly for biosynthetic process. So this is not the one. So the answer is option A. Okay. Last question. This is an important question which has come in your NEET 2017. So just answer. There are three points in cycle where NAD plus is reduced. Yes, we know. Uh, one is from uh, we know from alpha ketoglutarate it is formed and then to succinate and finally to fumarate to malate three NADH are formed correct but the question is incorrect select the incorrect one the cycle starts with acetyl CoA with pyruvic acid no acetyl CoA with OAA yes four carbon this is two carbon so this is the incorrect statement so we'll mark it the next one succinyl CoA to succinic acid GTP is produced yes substrate level phosphorylation correct. there is one point where fadh2 is produced but they ask you for incorrect one so answer is going to be second okay so i'm going to end the session for today so tomorrow i'll be talking about etc and oxidative phosphorylation which is very important there going to be continuation of this one so i hope everybody understood what i taught you if you have any kind of questions you can put in the live chat or you can just comment below and for your information there is a link which is given in the description box Uh, where you will be having a five years neat paper analysis you can just go download and get benefited thank you all of you for joining and i'm going to meet you in the next video thank you